All right, let's uh, let's rock and roll here. Count down in three, two. Always great catching up with my next guest, Modestus Bukauk is going to be back in action, taking on Zach Palgoy, UFC Fight Night, June seventeenth. Modestus, how are you, man? Very, very good. Thank you, sir, my man. Once again, thank you so much for having me here, bro. Hey, pleasure is all mine, man. Um, we were talking off air about uh, how late it is over there. Not that late. It's late for me because I'm a dad. But uh, nine o'clock, I think, around there is what time it is. What time do you go to bed? I'm always curious about that with fighters. Some of them like going to bed a bit later because it kind of puts them in the you know time when they'd be fighting and all that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's mad. I never I never usually like climatize myself. I just I just go to sleep whenever I get home, bro. Sometimes I get home from training. Uh, like when I got the call that I, that I was fighting Tyson Pedro, like you know. I, I got home at about 10.45 at night. So, you know, depending on when I eat my dinner and this and that, I mean, you know, some some days, uh, like like usually Thursdays, because I, um, I only do certain sessions, I do more recovery in the evenings. I can sleep a bit earlier, like 10 o'clock. But for the most part, I would say like 11 or 12. As you know, I've got, I've got these fidgety fingers on bloody social media up, up for at least one or two hours. So, but yeah, no, nah, I, I, you know, I, I get to sleep as and when i can basically <laughs> and do you get eight hours some some people need uh, more sleep than others right uh, i still teach pri um like private clients for personal training so uh sometimes it, it kind of depends I'm, I'm quite a big uh a big fan of taking naps to be honest with you so, uh, okay. so if you i don't with the naps. yeah sense. if if i don't get enough sleep during the night then i'll always come home at least before one or one the first session or the second session i'll usually get at least one or two hours extra there you go. Uh, so people don't think we're talking about, uh, you know, health and stuff. We actually have a fight to talk about. Um, you know, I know you're happy to get this matchup and, and get this fight and stuff. You're a little bit bummed, though, you're fighting in the apex. You go from UFC 284, which is such a big card, to, you know, now kind of fighting without a crowd. I guess that's one of the only downsides of this fight, right? Well, I mean, I guess you could say a downside, but I've actually got um, two of my, well, three of my very good friends, two of which are actually uh, clients of mine. Um, they are coming to the apex so i've got free oh, cool. free fans okay. tra traveling overseas so that's going to give me a great spirit and great energy uh obviously coming into that fight which is absolutely amazing i can't wait to have them there i'm sure it will be uh, a hell of an experience for them um just to be out there um and yeah of course bro i wanted to fight in london i mean being the uh the hometown guy you <laughs> you know you want to fight in front of a hometown crowd in a big arena and again in front of a big crowd because i really enjoyed it in australia i thought it was amazing even though i was getting booed bro i freaking loved it so i can only imagine uh -huh. what it's like when you got cheers coming out you know what i mean so um yeah. i kind of thought i would have earned it i would have earned it as well you know having fought in perth on literally two weeks notice against their top guy you know you would have thought would have earned the right to fight there um but i know zach he he messaged me on twitter uh and basically said what are you doing in june and i i responded saying well how about coming overseas in july and uh we both kind of like you know had had little one or two things and then and then yeah we basically just said well whatever mick says is going to happen is basically going to happen so either it's in london or it's going to happen in vegas and obviously mm. they opted to go for the for the for the vegas side so you know at the end of the day I've, I've still got some work to do you know i've got to prove myself still so okay we'll uh we'll, we'll go out and get another couple of big finishes you know we'll, we'll get some big wins some good performances and then and then i'll earn my right to to fight in my hometown so uh at the end of the day i see it as a as a good bit of healthy sort of having to prove myself and i get that so that's fine that's exactly what i'm gonna go and do was was this the right amount of time off though for you bro i mean do you know what i actually thought july in it, it, it you know it, it kind of ended up working out probably for the best because i actually thought july that's quite far like i would like to fight right, again yeah. you know i was already uh, chomping at the bit to fight at the first ufc london uh event you know i was like okay straight off the plane from australia let's, let's get ourselves another fight yeah, so, yeah, yeah um but yeah man i mean it couldn't have happened at a better time it was good Every, everything happened how it was supposed to like i say i think this is all fated this is all how my journey had to come along and uh, i'm actually glad that happened in june and not and actually not in july because it means that i get to fight earlier you know me bro if i could fight every every oh, couple I of months yeah, yeah, i yeah. definitely would <laughs> Yeah, no, absolutely. And and just, you know, one thing you kind of mentioned there, and I hear this from a few fighters, I was talking to a fighter yesterday about how, you know, on social media, they're kind of, you know, going like, I mean, you guys sort of decided that you wanted to fight each other and stuff. Did the matchmakers, do they ever like, thank you for that? Because like, I feel like you're kind of doing part of their job too. Um, I mean, or, or do I they like appreciate it or anything, I guess? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I, they don't openly say it, but I'm pretty sure, you know, that they, they kind of see certain matchups being 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 spit out there. And obviously then obviously the managers then take notice and then they push it forward. And uh I mean, listen, obviously I of of course I, I put names forward to my manager that I wanted to fight, and Zach Pogel was one of them. So oh, cool. I'm guessing they did the same on their side. Um, or at least he probably pushed it forward on Twitter first just to see would it would it actually come to fruition. I said yes, and then everything come together. So, you know, of course, the matchmakers are always thinking of their particular things that they want to happen. But yeah, um, I guess this is just all part of the, this is all part of the fun, all part of the entertainment, all part of you know, this this whole lovely game we call the fight game, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and fun fight here with Zach. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, a guy that's going to stand and trade with you. He's a teammate of Curtis Blades. You get that notoriety of fighting a guy from from that gym over at Elevation. Uh, stylistically, how are you looking at this one? I mean, he's, he's a, you know, obviously he's a good fighter. Um, he's done very well in such a short space of time to improve his skill sets to what they are, you know, coming from other sports. Um Heavy grappling approach, uh, especially in his in his last fight. Um, you know, he's got heavy hands, as most light heavyweights do. Um, his movement's not quite as prominent as some of the other guys that I've faced or other guys that are in the division. Um, but yeah, he 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 likes he likes to grapple. He likes to make it dirty, uh, and it is my job to make it undirty and to make sure that I uh, keep a distance, but i got to take it to him, you know? So stylistically, I've got many threats. Yeah, he's got threats, but I believe my threats are, are, are much more violent and much more painful than his, and that is what I'm going to showcase uh, on the night. Uh, training camp, is it pretty much the same as the last fight? I know last fight was a short camp, but even the fight before that, I know you sort of switched things up a little bit, still working with Will Fury and, and all those guys. Who, who are you getting to work with? Yeah, so um, Will Will Curry is uh, one of my main training partners. Um, yeah, Curry. Sorry. I, yeah, yeah, no, 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 all good, but, yeah. all good. Uh, I knew what you meant, anyways. Um, yeah. Simeon Powell, um, we were training, but um, you know, just our schedules just haven't aligned. But I, I usually train with him um, sometimes. But you know, I trained with uh, Sebastian Hale. He's actually from Germany. He's a really good friend of mine. We trained. Uh, uh, we trained at Jackson Wink together back when I was like. 22 so you know we, we've we've had like a long a long time friendship and you know he's come over here i've come over there so everything's just the same like <laughs> when i'm training i'm training to improve my skill sets i'm training to be in shape i'm training to i'm always training to improve my strength and conditioning i'm never really like taking a foot off the gas yes i you know let's say i have a personal training client you know i might if it's if I haven't got a fight signed, I might take that client if I can't do it at any other time instead of doing a training session. But I train every day, you know. Um, so with this, it's kind of it's just a continuation of exactly what I've been doing, but now with a focus, now with an, an opponent, and now with the thought of you know that you are actually fighting. So it kind of makes it it, it ramps up your 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 intensity, you know. But essentially. I'm just going off of the same things that I was doing leading up to every single fight. So it's just a continuation. Yeah. It's just like a a rolling a, a rolling timetable. It just keeps going. So it makes sure that I don't actually put any unnecessary pressure on myself. I don't have to. Oh, I'm in camp now. <laughs> mm. Where where is the bloody camp? I just do it all the time. Do you know what I mean? So it makes my mind free. It it, it helps me to to always improve my skill sets. Obviously, like I say, we're a bit more focused leading up to a fight, but essentially everything stays the same. I just train. I train to get better. Uh, I train with good good guys. And um, as the weeks get closer leading up to the fight, I get much more intense, uh, not only in my mindset, but in the way that I present myself at training also. So it just just carries on, bro. We just keep going every day. you mentioned, uh, you know, you have clients for personal training. Um, is it like, I'm just curious, like the business side of that thing, uh, is that, is that a bit, did you get more clients now that you're back in the UFC? Like, I think that would be a good selling point. Um, uh, when you get people wanting to sign up being like, I'm in the UFC as opposed to former UFC fighter. Yeah. Um, I, f- I definitely think it, 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 it has a, uh, it, it plays a factor, but I've all, what I've kind of done, I, I build, re, I build really good relationships with my clients. Right. That's 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 my thing, and I'm, I'm not just saying this is like a, a marketing. No, no, no brag away, man. Myself. You're I mean, the results speak for themselves. Uh, you're uh, you're a pretty but, fit guy, right? So, but you know, like for me, it's like it's all about, you know, can I connect with them? Can I give them something that can help them improve themselves? And that's what I'm literally trying to do. And and most of the time, I don't get martial arts clients. I actually get like just 
fitness in general uh, clients. And, you know, to be honest, bro, you know, as, as a fighter, you always want to look, look to try and find ways of uh, obviously having other outlets and other avenues of making, because that was one big mistake I made last time around is that I didn't continue to do my clients and I kind of just relied heavily on, on the fighters on on the fighters pay which you know as you know can can go very quickly uh, oh, yeah. depending depending on the outcome of fights and and stuff like this so i just kind of just keep it rolling uh, keep it going like i say i'm very good friends with with a lot of my clients as well kept them for many years um but yeah i will definitely be looking into into other avenues the only thing is i think it is a quite a difficult thing for fighters we don't really Unless you're being told or given a direction, or you or, or people are telling you where you need to go into, it's kind of hard to know where to start and how to do it. You know, I'm the kind of guy where you show me how to do something, I can imitate it and then put my own twist on it. You know, I can I can I can imitate it very. It's the same with like learning techniques in jujitsu or in wrestling. I I can see something and I can get it. You know, so if someone shows me how to do something or what to do business wise, I can be able to to follow along. And um, I know those things will come, you know, you need to build your notoriety, you need to build, build your fame, build your resume, uh, you know, obviously you, you get more money for these fights that also uh, opens doors for you. Um, so yeah, bro, it's just, it's just a case of just, just constantly, uh, constantly learning, trying to improve myself and then, uh, and then the opportunities will come. So I know it's just hand in hand, uh, everything plays together. Uh, you mentioned having some uh, some you know clients and friends coming out. Uh, who's going to be in your corner uh, coming out with you on the big trip? So it's, it's going to be uh, um, so obviously my, my dad being being my head coach. Um, we've got uh, Danny Batten as well, uh, who's from Team BST. Um, another one of my main sort of MMA coaches. Um, him and my dad work so well together. Uh, I really I do really do love those two. The way that they they. And you saw as well in the Chuck Campbell fight the way they just gel off of each other, you know, giving instruction. And of course, my man Will Curry. Um, you know, um, Will obviously is a really good training partner of mine. Very intense. Taught me about the dark side, uh, and 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 these are things that that you need going into war, going into battle. You need those. You need those types of people around you. And um, yeah, it, he always gets me in a good mind frame. He's 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 very eccentric, very crazy, and uh, as you can. As, you, as everyone's already seen, very loud as well, very vocal uh, in in the corner. So yeah, I've got a great team behind me, and I'm uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, to having them in my corner out for the fight. How's this play, fight uh, playing out on June seventeenth? I'm gonna go and finish this guy. Simple and plain. Uh, you know, he's got he's got good attributes. He's got good uh, he's got good things going for him. But this is a fight where I know I can get the finish. You know, whether it be on stand up or on the ground, I need to go and finish this guy. Um, I respect him. He's a great fighter, but I'm better. And that's what I'm going to show. You want to get like one, two more fights in? I know you want to keep active, but obviously, you know, you got to, you got to take some time to enjoy life as well and keep training and all that. So you, do you see yourself maybe getting one more fight in or you think two, what, what sort of your, you're not looking past um, June 17th, obviously. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll see what happens. We'll see what, what, what the UFC, uh, what the UFC want, you know, obviously, uh, you can't, you know, bet going out of a fight unscathed either. Um, so depending on hopefully no injuries and stuff like this, uh, I'm I'm already like kind of I know that three fights in a year is very good. So I'm going with that. But hey, if I can get four in, <laughs> why the hell not? I'm always up for I'm always up for a scrap and I'm always up for improving. It just kind of depends. But definitely I want to get one more fight after this one, 100. percent And if we could squeeze in another one, why the hell not? So. Uh, Bro, I, you know me, I like to stay active. Uh, I like to stay sharp. So um, I like to stay in the spotlight. So why not? Downtime, what's that looking like right now? Getting any gaming in or watching any good Netflix? Bro, you just it's, mentioned it's the McGregor mad. documentary. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I've been watching that and, it, and it's really good. I, I really do advise everyone, everyone to watch that because I think people underappreciate what fighters have to go through it's mad because they, they put like little little scenes or little clippings of what media like other media says about that, fighters. Yeah. and yeah. it's just like you guys don't really know what these guys are going through what injuries yeah. they have to deal with and, and, and stuff like this so it is a really nice insight because even myself i might have been a little bit naive as to what the actual situation uh is and how it was for him like during all those fights so uh, uh, obviously he's ha he's had his crazy moments as well but um yeah now nah, like obviously um a as a fighter he, he is exceptional and, and obviously that's a great thing and in terms of other downtime bro i mean look 
I don't actually play. It's mad. I've, I think I've said this before, but like I used to be a mad gamer. I used to I used to love it. I used to play it from literally morning to evening. As soon as school was out and it got to the weekend, I would play. I would just stay up all night. And then when I woke up in the morning, I'll play it again. My dad used to get pissed off at me. Like, why the hell are you playing computer games? Why aren't you like, you know, doing some sports or something? Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, man, like, to be honest, I like, I like watching, I like watching uh, documentaries like such as that one. I'm the same uh, I way. Like, yeah. I, I, I like reading some books and stuff like that. And I like watching stuff that's relatable to to fighting or i like listening to things that are relatable to to lessons that i've learned in life like yeah. not just about fighting but you know even about like certain things that's like about confidence about about women about you know about so many different avenues that you know i've learned over the course of this time especially since this e injury that i like to just keep myself more knowledgeable and uh obviously as well i like to I want to learn how to how to um, handle business wise things a, a lot better. I feel like everything that happened in my life is always like a little bit later than everyone else. But I I enjoy that. I I, I embrace it and I take it on. Like I want to try and improve myself as much as possible. That's why I like doing it in my free time. There you go. And doing interviews. Uh, appreciate the time, man. We're All looking right. forward to it. UFC Fight Night, June 17th. Anyone you want to thank before we get out of here? Sponsors, social media, you name it. I'll give you the last word. Yeah. So um, I've got I, I got to just obviously say like to to, 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 to all my teammates, uh, obviously my dad being the, num the number one guy, uh, I've got to give a big shout out to Steven. You know who you are, filmographer. Ben, who's also another f filmographer. Re really, really great guys. Uh, BST Academy. Uh, Pure Jiu Jitsu, Hodge Grace Academy, Aria Estefanmes, uh, and Sandro. You guys are the are, are the men really helping me with my grappling. Uh, Prometheus, Lucas Klinger, very good teammate of mine. Obviously, the man Will Curry, um, another great um, teammate of mine. And yeah, like like I say, we've just got um, we've just got a whole array, whole team, just always helping me out, always always trying to get me to the highest level. And um, Iridium Sports Agency, um, they've always looked after me. Uh, they've been with me since day one uh, and and I really, really value all the help that they give me all the time. Uh, Jason's the man. Um, and yeah, I've got to thank the UFC and uh, thank everyone that's watching and supporting all my family. I think that's that's pretty much it. If I've if I've left everyone out, I'm sorry. But uh, like I say, I love you all. Uh, and uh, let's go and get this big win on June 17th. Yeah.